Hi right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful summer evening in paradise here in the collapse of everything. Come on, little dog. On this absolutely gorgeous, it is now a Wednesday night. It is August 14, 2024. Uh, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and uh, I, 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 I can't believe I am uh, getting ready to talk about airplane contrails, as I call cap trails, capitalism trails. You know, I used to be one of these uh, chemtrail wackos, I'm embarrassed to admit, but I was one of these chemtrail wackos. And I was thinking, uh, I mean, what could explain this? And the only thing I could figure back when I was a deluded chemtrail wacko is that it was some secret program to a secret solar radiation management geoengineering program to reflect sunlight back into space uh, w w with these damn things. But then I started seeing them in the middle of the night and I'm thinking to myself, well, why are they, why are they spraying these things at night? It seems to me like that would trap the heat in and actually make global warming worse. Uh, so I was a totally confused, uh, deluded chemtrail wacko until I, you know, I, I did finally pull my head out of my ass and, and eat my tinfoil hat and understood that uh, chemtrails are a natural, unintended, a natural byproduct, an unintended consequence of global industrial civilization and uh, so uh, just been not knowing what to do with these things but space.com has come in with the latest research airplane contrails are a tricky and surprising contributor contributor to global warming Take it away. Space.com. Commercial airplanes have made strides in reducing, have made strides in reducing their carbon emissions, but the exhaust clouds trailing behind them can still have long-term impacts on the environment, a new study suggests. Researchers from Imperial College London found that condensation trails or contrails created by aircraft exhaust fumes trap heat in the atmosphere. As a result, these cloud streaks have a greater impact on global warming than that of the carbon emissions themselves from the combustion of jet fuel, according to the study. <clears throat> this is Edward Gyre Spirit, lead author of the study, said in a statement, quote, this study throws a spanner, that is the, uh, what the people over in England call a pipe wrench, spanner or a pipe wrench. This study throws a pipe wrench in the works for the aviation industry. Newer aircraft are flying higher and higher in the atmosphere to increase fuel efficiency and reduce carbon emissions. <clears throat> the unintended consequence of this is that these aircraft flying over the North Atlantic are now creating more longer lived contrails trapping additional heat in the atmosphere 
and increasing the climate impact of aviation, close quote. There's just no way to win. Modern commercial aircraft are designed to fly at altitudes above 38,000 feet where the air is thinner and there is less aerodynamic drag in order to reduce jet fuel consumption, which creates less carbon emissions. Meanwhile, private jets fly more than 40,000 feet above Earth where there is less air traffic. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, using AI, good old AI, to analyze satellite data on more than 64,000 contrails from a range of aircraft flying over the North Atlantic, the researchers found that modern aircraft, both commercial and private, can you say Taylor Swift, create more contrails than older aircraft and that these contrails take longer to dissipate which influences current estimates of climate warming. Quoting this Geyer Spear, quote, this does not mean that more efficient aircraft are a bad thing, far from it, as they have lower carbon emissions per passenger mile. However, our findings reflect the challenges the aviation industry faces when reducing its climate impact. There you go, but there is one industry that does not give a flying fuck uh, about its climate impact and that, of course, is the oil and gas industry. So I want to thank EP from BC for sending me this article right out of here from Reuters News. <clears throat> this is for anyone still failing to understand that it makes zero difference whether Donald Trump or Kamala Harris end up in the White House as far as this planet is concerned. No difference. This story has nothing to do with who is in the White House uh, next January. Nothing whatsoever to do. Anyway, either one of those planet-eating corporate whores is in the White House. Uh, all of these oil companies are going to go right on about business as usual, drill baby drill, doing everything they can to rip out as much fossil fuels as they can from anywhere on this planet as Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, I should say Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, will be cheering them on. Okay, so we're going to go to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico where you might remember we had a little oil spill on Earth Day a few years ago. Take it away. Reuters news. Chevron delivers industry first in ultra high pressure oil field from Houston, Texas. All right. Chevron, you know, Chevron Oil Company has achieved a technological breakthrough producing the first oil from a U.S. Gulf of Mexico oil field under extreme subsea pressures, the energy company said on Monday. Its $5.7 billion project called Anchor ushers in an era of production from deep water areas that had long been off limits until now. Because of the lack of equipment able to cope with pressures of up to 20,000 pounds per square inch, Chevron and Partner, the French oil service, 
total energies expects the anchor development to produce for the next 30 years. 30 years. Uh, th this is going to go right on uh, sucking oil out of the bottom of the ocean. This is Chevron teaming up with this group of planet eaters from France, uh, I'm virtually 100% sure the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico is not private land, that it is, quote, our public lands that are supposed to be owned by every American. Yeah, right. It is drill baby drill more than ever for the next 30 years and now we're going to be sucking more and more oil uh, out of the bottom of the, come on little dog, out of the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico than we ever have before as Donald Trump and Kamala Harris cheer on. <clears throat> Chevron and those French guys. At its peak, the floating platform will pump up to 75,000 barrels of oil <coughs> and 28 million cubic feet of natural gas every day. 365 days a year for 30 years, uh, this one project will be sucking out 75,000 barrels of oil and 28 million cubic feet of natural gas every day. Uh, and, and you're talking to me uh, that fossil fuels are going anywhere uh, in, in, in the next 30 years. Ain't going to happen. Pull your head out of your ass. Okay? Uh, fossil fuels are going nowhere. This is Chevron Executive Vice President Nigel Hearn. Quote, This industry... That this industry first deep water technology allows us to unlock previously difficult to access resources and will enable similar deep water high pressure developments for the industry, meaning the oil and gas industry. Already another U.S. oil company, Beacon Offshore Energy, aims to replicate Chevron's feat at its deep Shenandoah deepwater field, also off the coast of Louisiana. The first oil there is expected in uh, 2025. How about BP from England? discovered the Gulf of Mexico's first 20,000 pounds per square inch field called Cosquita in 2006, but the subsea technologies of the time did not allow development until now. And last month, BP greenlit development of the field citing new developments it plans to leverage subsea equipment designs and achieve the first Cascada oil field production in 2029. Chevron's <coughs> development will have seven subsea oil wells tied to the anchor floating production platform. The subsea field is estimated, this one field, is 
estimated to hold up to 440 million barrels of recoverable oil and gas, said Bruce Nymeyer, head of Chevron's America Oil and Gas Production, quote, This anchor milestone demonstrates Chevron's ability to safely deliver projects within budget in the Gulf of Mexico. There you go. Uh, nothing else needs to be added to this. If you ever hear Kamala Harris say one fucking lying sack of shit a word out of her lying bitch mouth that she gives a flying fuck about this planet. She is a lying sack of shit corporate whore. At least with Donald Trump on this one uh, and this uh, on this one subject, Donald Trump is not for once a lying sack of shit. Uh, he agrees that he is a corporate stooge uh, doing Chevron oils bidding for them. So when Donald Trump says, I'm going to get out there and drill, baby drill, every square fucking inch of America's public lands as I can get my greedy paws on, for once you can believe Donald Trump. Okay? When Kamala Harris acts like she gives a flying fuck about this planet, she is a lying sack of shit, corporate whore bitch who no more cares uh, 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 about the future of this planet than Donald Trump does. Fuck Kamala Harris. Fuck Donald Trump. It is business as usual on this planet, and, and, and we're going uh, down the fucking toilet. And anybody who votes for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris is complicit in the destruction of life on planet Earth. Okay? When you go in that voting booth on uh, whenever and you put a, a vote down for either one of these planet-eating motherfuckers, you, you are sending this planet in, just into a burning lake of hell. So think about that between now and November 1st. When you see my little dog is out there thinking about some pork and beans on the uh, on the stove. Little dog, are you thinking about some pork and beans or what? Is your pop I'm thinking about some pork and beans. So uh, I'm going to go get my pork and beans off of my probably fracked. Pro is propane fracked? I've never been 100% sure what the fuck propane is. But I've got some pork and beets on the stove that me and the little dog need to go eat while we still can. Bye, guys.